Today I'm going to talk about how I back up my projects, media files, photos, videos, music production projects. They have to be backed up because this is my life's work. Filming this video for the 35th time is also my life's work. This is not really a video on how you back up your data. It's more of how I think when I back up my projects. Because backing up your data will depend a little bit on your workflow. I'm not today going to talk about a complete system backup or system restore. Today I'm just talking about how I back up my files. I never back up my entire system. If I have to do something about Windows, I have things set up so that I don't have to worry if I have to reinstall Windows. Things like bookmarks, they are stored in the cloud at Google. Things like receipts, documents and all of that are stored in the cloud with iCloud, Google Drive and things like that. So this is just backing up media files, how I have uh, set that up. There is a software that is the heart of this entire backup routine. It's not free but I really like it. I've been using it for many years and this is not a sponsored video, at least not as of this recording. This is a tool I've used for many years and I really like it and it does one thing and it does it great. It uh, keeps two folders or two drives in sync. That's basically the main use of this tool. It also has some advanced options like uh, archiving and things like that, but I'm not going to talk much about that. So what we can do now is just to take a look in Windows and I can show you how I have things set up. So here you can see the storage devices in the system. You can see there are some mapped network devices underneath here. I also have two physical drives. The first drive, the C drive, is an SSD around 500 gigabytes. And the other drive is a 4 terabyte Western Digital black hard drive. On my SSD, I have my production folder where I have my music production projects in Ableton Live and things like that. I have the store on the SSD because of speed. I want to have the music production projects load up as fast as possible and things like samples and stuff like that. The Lightroom library is also stored on the SSD to give Adobe Lightroom a little more performance when starting up and uh, reading the uh, database. On the 4TB hard drive I have some different things like the native instrument content, the origin folder, that's some games, pictures, these are raw pictures and it's about, uh, yeah, it's about 1TB of pictures. And my YouTube folder is getting big, it's 1.5 terabytes, so this won't fit on the SSD. So I can take these two windows, take them side by side, so we have them here. So we have the SSD here, and we have the 4 terabyte hard drive here. So what I do now is I use this tool I mentioned, mentioned earlier, and I have set up a few backup routines here. The Lightroom library to 4 terabyte Western Digital Black. And if we go into it here, we can see that it says a backup from C users pictures Lightroom and it should back up to D pictures Lightroom. So it backups from the Lightroom library on this SSD drive to a folder on this 4 terabyte Western Digital Black Drive. Then I have my production folder where the Ableton Live projects, music production projects and everything is. It is said to copy the entire production folder from the C drive and backup it to the D drive. In the description I have called it prod to 4 terabyte Western Digital Black just to have an easy to read overview. So now I have my music production folder and I have my Lightroom library backed up to the 4 terabyte hard drive. So the music production folder and the Lightroom folder is now stored on two physical hard drives in the PC in this room. But what about the YouTube library on this PC and the pictures library on this PC? Then we can go back to the window I showed you earlier here with the mapped network drives. So the mapped network drives you see here, this is a network attached storage. Uh, this It's running uh, Unraid. And as you can see here in this tool, I have pictures to Unraid. So this takes the pictures from the 4 terabyte drive and sends that to the Y drive, which is mapped to the Unraid share. And then I have the YouTube folder 
on the 4 terabyte drive. It's also being sent to a mapped drive on the Unraid server. And I've named it YouTube to Unraid. So I take the production folder from the 4 terabyte drive and send that to a map drive again on Unraid. And I also have some websites I also back up on Unraid here. So there are some things in this tool you can set. I'm not going to go into all of them because frankly I don't use all of them. But there you have one thing here is uh, when to backup. I have set that to every six hours. Or you can also set it to when files or folders are modified in real time. And you can also set it to when manually started. You can change it and schedule it to your liking. There's a reason for me setting it to six hours and not when files or folders are modified. If I accidentally delete something, I don't want it to just propagate everything at once. I want to have a little time to try to fix the problem bef before it updates all of the backups. So that's why I have it set it to six hours. You also have an option of deleting. If you delete something, you can set it to archive the backup copies and it will delete it in this case after two weeks. So if you accidentally delete something and you think it has synchronized it, you can actually find it in an archive folder and you can get your files back. And uh, I think that's a uh, good, uh, good thing to use. As you can see here, I have deleted some projects here, but they are still here. And after two weeks, they will be deleted with uh, the current settings. So let's recap then. If the SSD dies and uh, I have to replace it, I can just copy the production folder and my Lightroom library from the 4 terabyte drive and I up and running again after I have reinstalled Windows. It's no problem. So if we get a polar bear here in Norway jumping through the window, no, we don't get polar bears here where I live. But let's just for fun of it say that a polar bear jumps into this room and eats this PC. I have the backups on the Unraid server on in the basement below. But what if the entire house burns down with the basement and everything? What happens then? Well, I didn't talk that much about it, but on the Unraid server, I also have a cloud backup solution that backups the Unraid server to a Norwegian cloud service called Jota Cloud. And this way it will be possible to get the files from the cloud if the house burns down. And we have had fire in this house, so trust me, I know what can happen. So using this backup routine may take some setting up, but when it's up and running, it takes care of itself mostly and it works fine for my, at least for my use. I've been thinking of extending this backup as well. As maybe you know, I live in Norway, but I have a friend living in another country. Well, it's our brother country, it's Sweden. And he is more or less just as nerdy as I am. And I've been actually been talking about maybe setting up a server on his place and then setting up another server on my place. And we can host each other's uh, backups without having to rely on corporations like uh, Backplace or, or some uh, big uh, company. I mean, it's it's your data. We, we give up a lot of data to Google. We give up a lot of data to, to Apple. And even if those types of services are convenient and very good to use for most people, there's this thing of owning your own data and not giving it away to someone. I realized that this is not probably the most easy way of backing up your data. I welcome some civilized discussion in the comments below. Do you have any suggestions on how to make this better or leaner in some way, you are very welcome to share your opinions in the comments below. I'm always on the lookout of uh, doing things in a better way. So even if this was technically not a real how to backup your Windows 10 system, I hope this video gave you some at least ideas on how to do it and it uh, helps you backup your own projects. If you like this type of videos, liking the video is helpful and subscribing is even better. I also have links below to my website where you can find links to all of my social media. And if you have your own YouTube channel, you can also find music you can use as background music for your videos if you need that. So with that, I say thank you and I will see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye.